good morning. Uh, welcome to another live interview. I happen to come across uh, a very formidable name in the Nigerian political and business industry. Uh, he is a former minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Honorable Kenneth Bagi. Uh, you would know if those who are in the hospitality industry, the entertainment industry, uh, retail would definitely know that that name rings bell very well and very strong across the southern part of Nigeria, the south side, and indeed Nigeria by and large. And those of the Nigerians, of course, as well, definitely have come across Honorable Kenneth Bagi. So I'm just going to really go straight to him. He is having his breakfast, so guys, forgive me, and then, of course, forgive him, um, because I know he's trying to run away, but uh, it's a pleasure to always bring for the benefit of diaspora in Nigeria. Many thanks, uh, Alistair. And very good morning to you as well. We are transiting. I mean, you know, a transition from one government to another is not an easy um, situation if you have ever been in government. However, um, it's a bad time for government to start, you know, bringing about policies and economic plan in such a manner that the common man will feel the impact you know, of governance, which of course is the purpose of uh, government in itself. Yeah. So if you ask me, I would think that it's the bad time to draw the line as to what we want to clean up and what we want to achieve and what time would poor men, poor people, the common men in the society and street who start enjoying the dividends of democracy. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you are a leading figure from the south side part of Nigeria. You are a voice for the nation of Delta and many other environment or uh, neighboring state in the country. The vice president recently visited uh, the south side and Delta. How would you rate his visit now that you have heard more, maybe from many other people that were there or other people that were not there? Um, quite honestly, the Vice President is somebody that I have known since 1986, when himself and um, our Kalu were um, legal assistant or PA to um, um, an elder friend figure, Bola Jibola, who was then the Attorney General of the Federation. I have my respect and regards for him. But with regards to the issue that transpired in the Niger Delta or in Delta State, as it were, I completely disagree that that's the way to have proceeded. Now, the vice president had a shadow, and that shadow was well known. And in fact, I was in Delta to contribute a bit of my quota. And then that shadow was to see him go to Baramatu, see the law of worry, and go to the heart of the global nation, which was, which was really to meet the monarchs there. What I disagree with, putting all the monarchs into a classroom situation in PTI school uh, of global, you know, divide, to me was not acceptable. To me, did not say anything. To me, it's not the way to look for peace. And then such a public gathering makes nuisance of the entire stuff. But be mindful of the fact that if the president had released, the vice president had released his program, the question we are looking for is, the answer we are looking for is, who changed that Ugeli visit to the traditional rulers and kept those old men, including the 100 years old king, from 11 o'clock to 5 o'clock waiting for the vice president and the governor who had gone to visit other government um, traditional rulers privately in their palaces. That is not the way to look for peace. That is not respectful. I know Yomio Shibajo very well, that he will respect age, he will respect tradition. So I wonder what happened. And I'm taking this up with the governor of the state because, again, if he had put his plan together, we wouldn't have had a situation where the traditional rulers would have worked out the way they did. And to me, traditional rulers are not part of government. Traditional rulers are not part of the state. They are fathers to be respected. You cannot take the sultan of 
Sokoto or Tibi or Bini or Lori to go and be waiting for one governor or one vice president for over seven hours. I call that irresponsible and I do not accept it. Well, so basically, it's more to do with the, the, the tradition and the culture and respect for what is happening in the country. Now, of course, as a leading, you have been a politician, even though now you're becoming, going back into what you're well known for business. And of course, you are a legal icon in the country. How will you sum up the situation so far? I mean, looking at it, you have talked about what took place and shared more, enlightened the people. But what chances do you see for Nigeria, especially now in terms of the global economy, in terms of the recession going on, and in terms of giving hope to Nigerians, both those in the country and those outside the country? Uh, I used to put it this way. Most of the problem I've seen here as a business private man who ventured into government, and what I see is that deceit is the core problem we have in Nigeria. Lies, deceit, misinformation, you know, disusing the people. I find it very shameful that I suspect a reply coming from the state government saying that am I championing the cause of robo people? First and foremost, I'm a robo man. In the Nigeria today, I am a robo man and I'm proud to say so. I have a title from Ugeni, I have a title from Okwe, I have one from Olomu. Out of the dint of hard work, I haven't said so. Somebody has got to speak. I spoke all the time in favor of Okoa. I did my possible best to put Okoa in office where he is today. So for me to disagree on the issue of the treatment of the traditional rulers is one of the 10 other situations I've done in favor of Okoa in the state. However, Nigeria would move no further from where we were unless we go back to telling truth. Look at how Trump has been turned upside down and been searched. You cannot say you want to rule, and you rule under a cocoon. I mean, in this modern age of social media and what have you, there's so very little you can hide. So the question is that the governor, realizing he has made a mistake, drove to the Ridge of Oak West Palace to appeal to him. And he should appeal to all the traditional rulers. With greatest respect, we must not deceive these old men. We must not deceive people because they communicate between they and the grassroots. But having said so, the Nigerian question is one where the president, I believe, is honest. I believe the president is honest. If we take the visit of Yemen Shibaja to the state, for instance, there was no policy statement. That is because you cannot extract a policy statement from the president that he does not mean. We must go back to that era where president, governors, local government chairmen make comments and the comments can be taken to the bank as opposed to what we had before mm. where people just make comments for the fun of it. I mean, if, if, if look, look at the title I got from Odom. Eh? The Ataniru eh, of Onomukeno, you say, you speak and you do it. Other people in native music talking, I do. We cannot have a country. The country today lives in deceit. And the president alone cannot do it. So we need a totality of a turnaround situation in Nigeria for us to start understanding. Nobody believes anybody. Even government papers are being refused today. Government papers are being denied by people. Anything called Nigeria, anywhere else of the shores of Nigeria, is disrecognized. So we must go back to start doing things properly so we can leave something for our children, so we can have a trust situation where our children can come back and say, this is what my father lived. People who ran that country where they are all running to America, Germany, Britain, and people sacrificed. You want to say the truth and people say, oh, don't say the truth. Oh, just leave it like that. That's what is happening. So I find it difficult that we are not making progress. The president is shouting, given his age, we all as Nigerians need to stand up to call a country ours because this is the only one we have. We have no any other country to run to. At, at my age now, I cannot relocate to any other country. So we must fight it here 
and repair it here and make sure it works here. That's my position. Well, thank you. I know you're, um, I'm the one who's hijacking your timetable. Uh, you, have, you have been a former minister. And right now you've seen the performance, at least, of the present administration ministers. What advice, if possible, do you think you may give them if they have to ask you as a former minister, as a successful businessman in the country, for them to help really change the pain and create the opportunities that Nigerians so desire in this moment of time? If you ask me, I hear the president is going to um, um, reshuffle his cabinet. Um, first, if you have people with questionable character already, mm. it is a baggage. Without pointing fingers at anybody right now, the fact remains that the president alone cannot mm. do his job. He needs a team mm. that can see mm. him succeed. And already two years of his government is coming to an end in May. The next year, which is just half, election year would have come to stay. So nothing really will happen. I believe that the president needs to send messages of the dividend of democracy. The trust Nigerians have reposed on him. The expectations of Nigeria as to what he can possibly do or what he will do for them is lacking. To that extent, he needs to overhaul a team. He needs to charge the people that he wants to work with. He needs to give them what we call a machine order and a target. As a minister, I served for one year, hopefully, and my one year timetable was fantastic. I will say so. The dividend of what I did as a minister today, creating 12th university, creating uh, colleges of education, creating a um, uh, 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 girls' child school, are all there for people to see for the rest of I mean, it's a history. What have they done? Let them score the ministers. Let them score them individually as to what they've done. Let them go back and search them. Once you say you're a public figure, I have, thank God I've returned back to my private life. But once you say you're a public figure, it means you're a taxpayer, Anna, and you must be accountable to that taxpayer. The oligarchian arrangement where people who are governors, president, vice president, ministers, go and sit down, you want to do a business forum, you pack it with government staff who have no business, who have not contributed anything. And I would suggest that government should start looking at people who have succeeded in the business world. Mm. Look at Trump. People who have succeeded in the business world to come and help run government. You cannot bring failures. Anybody who is at his 40s who have not been able to put a lively source of food for himself, his children, and his he cannot be a good person to govern a place. Mm. So to that extent, we must think well. We must speak the truth. They say the people who speak who speaks the truth they don't like them, but I'll die doing the same. I will not change. I'll say the way I say. I don't have anything against the core. The question is that what did Yomi Oshibajo bring to Delta? What is it going to take to the place? Is there any policy of government? that this is what we are going to do, this is what we are going to do. How can you spend taxpayers when you say you are going for a fact-finding? Is there anything the governor does not know in the state that he will form, put together in paper and pen and send for you know for you to form a policy? I think it's all jamboree waste of time. Mm. We must be honest with ourselves. We must do things the way we must do it. And if you have no skeleton in your box, fear no evil. Cost to glory and make sure Nigeria becomes a greater country. Thank you so much. Privilege, as I say, just to quickly get uh, Honorable Ken Agbaji to share with us uh, on the latest incidents and events in the country, and especially from the south side, and more so precisely from Delta State. So, guys, until another time that we are lucky enough again to come across somebody, have a good day, and God bless. Bye.